Tim Waltz could not keep a straight face, even nodding along at times as J.D. Vance demolished him on almost every issue. The governor seemed nervous and visibly uncomfortable, suggesting maybe he's not ready for the bright lights on the world stage. For more on what Tim Walsh's sometimes bizarre posture and facial expressions might mean, let's welcome Greg Hartley, a body language expert. Greg, what did you see from the candidates last night? What were you looking for and what did you see? And let's begin with Tim Walls. Yeah, with Tim Walls, what we noticed in the very beginning was he was very uncomfortable. Fight or flight affects us. So really only two real elements of body language. One is us trying to communicate our message. The other is fight or flight, trying to have the animal come forward and protect the body. Early on, you could see he was wooden, he was rigid, he was moving kind of rapidly and threat checking over to make sure JD was not his threat. And you can see that in his wooden movement. You can see his face flush as his body's trying to take control. Greg, um, I want you to take a look at this. Might have been the toughest moment for Waltz last night. Tell me what you think. Look, I, uh, I grew up in small rural Nebraska, uh, town of 400, town that you rode your bike with your buddies till the streetlights come on, and I'm proud of that service. I joined the National Guard at 17, worked on family farms. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in Hong Kong and China during the democracy protests went in. And from that, I learned a lot of what needed to be in, in governance. Thank you, Governor. What do you see there? We see a tremendous amount of withholding information. That lip compression is withholding either information or emotion. You can see a grief muscle, this thing in his forehead, when he's associating with the fact he's nailed. When he is rambling, it's because he can't complete a sentence. In fact, he uses words out of one sentence and the other. So this is probably the hot moment he was most afraid of and we get to see it play out on his face right here in front of us. You see that chin boss do that in acceptance? It's, this is a beautiful example of somebody who's busted. Before uh, we get to one more of Waltz, uh, your thoughts on J.D. and his demeanor and his body language throughout that debate? Yeah, he was smooth, polished, had everything together. He was fluid. You listen. The pl only place you saw a stumble or his blink rate increase, which indicates stress, and you heard him kind of have to navigate language, was around abortion, his toughest issue. So much more polished in his delivery, even when there was that moment. And when someone's watching the debate, are they subtly picking up on these things? Maybe they don't realize what it is that they're seeing, but are they feeling it, and does it help affect their opinion about both candidates? Yeah, Rick, just to tell you, I mean, people say all the time, this is snake oil, and you know what I do? I just roll my eyes, and they get the message. We are intended to read this. We blunted it and turned it off, but we pay attention. We pick up on subtle cues. It's the reason we feel awkward sometimes when we shouldn't. I want to share another clip of Walls from uh, the moment when they asked him about the October 7th attack on Israel. Let's keep in mind where this started. October 7th, Hamas terrorists uh, massacred over 1,400 Israelis and took prisoners. Uh, Iran, or I, uh, Israel's ability to be able to defend itself is absolutely fundamental. Getting its uh, hostages back, fundamental, and ending the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, but the expansion, the, the halting there, is that what you look at? Yeah. Yeah. So what we're hearing, verbal fluency is one of the first things that goes when all the stress hormones hit your brain, it starts to turn off the frontal lobe and the thinking brain, the most complex of our systems and starts to put you back in a reactive brain. So you lose fluency and you start to halt in cadence as you speak. And that's what we're seeing. And when people say who won or lost, I mean, you're, you're, I guess, judging it on, on different qualifiers, different factors, but it sounds like you think Vance, hands down, won the body language debate. Oh, for sure. For sure. Very smooth. This is a Kennedy and, um, and Nixon moment in terms of how they look in front of yeah. the camera. Greg Hartley, thanks so much. Very informative. Appreciate Real it. Pleasure.